Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Another beautiful Renton Wednesday. Yeah, man. And it is April. It's spring. And April... Uh, nine, seven, seven, somewhere in there. <laughs> Easter happened. I, I looked that. this up. It's day seventy-seven of the Biden administration. So work your way okay. backwards. Figure out the seventy-seven count. days since January twentieth. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Cool. Okay, we're rocking. Yeah. And we're on episode number nineteen. Nineteen. Whoa. We're, yes. we're more than legal now. We are. <laughs> I think we can even drink in Europe. Wait, no, in Alberta, Canada. Sorry. Uh, in Canada. Yes. Actually, no, it might be 18. We might have been drinking for a year. Yeah, beer Alberta. only, though, right? <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah. I think, I think it's beer, but maybe it's not. I know some of my Canadian friends and people I know that have moved up have been very put off by 18-year-olds in the bars and clubs. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so that's Chris that would suck, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't hang out in the bar scenes anymore, but uh, mm. hanging out with kids half your age probably yeah. less. Well, we have a good show tonight. Yeah, always got a good we show. We do. Easter happened. We have another special guest. A uh, very special guest. Indeed. I feel, I feel like we, I know this guy. Should like we I'm introduce now or should we wait till... Ah, we'll wait till the next time. Kind of like the first time. Yeah, like yeah. Like but we're going to talk... Uh, it's going to be kind of a political show this night. Indeed. Tonight, so, indeed. Um, and that's okay. And I think I'm more right than you. I think... I think so, I think yeah. I'm more of a conservative... Yeah. I feel like I'm center-left... Yeah, um, I'm right on a few issues, but I feel like I, I lean pretty pretty hard left. But I'm, I feel like a, a centrist. I always describe myself as a conservative liberal with moderate tendencies. So Biden's like right up your alley. Ah, uh, yeah. Next. I mean, for the most, <laughs> most part, yeah, yeah. Well, we got we got yes, political theme. Um, we have a, a game short. We have an interesting advertisement from this weird company you were telling me about. Yes, uh, our first sponsor. Yeah, which is awesome to see. Um, so we'll take any sponsor. So hell yeah. reach out to us. We got crazy eights. Do political, and it's a theme. political theme again. Indeed. So, and do you know what happens if politics gets out of control? What happens? Post-apocalyptic mayhem. <laughs> we can only be so lucky. We're chewing on the bones of a dead empire, yeah. rummaging through the rubble, trying to find functional technology and figure out what really went down in the great epic of the past. I feel like I kind of dig that world, man. Yeah. You know, or I didn't have to punch a clock for 40 yeah. hours a week and Indeed. just go hunt down. Well, let's take them to a little snippet of that world yeah. in this beautiful game called Psy that you've seen Charles and I play before. I took a swing at it on their solo mode. The autonomo... Autonom autonomota. Autonomata. Autonomata something. Something. Something like that. But check it out, and we'll be back with our special guest. See you soon.
Is it on? Well, welcome it back. On? Welcome back, special guest. Specialist guest in the world. My this goodness. is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this boy is related to me. Um, is he your cousin? He, he, uh, no, not quite. <laughs> uh, this is my son, Mr. Bailey Bressler. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us tonight. Welcome sure to the show. Right. Yeah. Let me give you some more glass. I'm excited. Get a move. Yeah, we're excited to have you. You're our second guest ever. Well, second in person guest. Third ever. guest, second in person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is cool. And you know we have a really big audience, so it's okay to be nervous. All three subscribers out there. Yeah, we've we got Ozzy Osbourne, we got uh, Donald Trump, mm -hmm. we got Obama. Barack Obama, we got Judge mm -hmm. Judy. Judge Judy called in. Yeah, big time. Yeah, big name. Charlie Sheen. Yeah. Woo. Tiger blood. Tiger Sheen. Uh, yeah. yeah, so hey, we're we're doing kind of a political issue, uh, political episode tonight. Um, so uh, who better than my son, who is a uh, political scientist, indeed, um, and works in the field, works in the uh, in the political field. Indeed. So what's that all about? Yeah, so uh, I've been working with a number of uh, local candidates here in the state of Washington. Um, we've been uh, I work uh, in political consulting. Um, partnered up with uh, Break Blue Strategies, a uh, long-term partner with Adam Trotty. Um, so yeah, we're super excited. We started a new initiative for 2021, uh, working with local candidates across the state of Washington in often overlooked races. Wow. Yeah. So when you say often overlooked, are we talking like sort of small races that people don't, you know, you know, people come out for the president and senators and stuff. Is this like the, the what mayor of Union Town or something? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that's that's kind of what we're looking at. Is we want to we want to challenge every single race. Um, you know, from school board all the way up to U.S. Congress. Oh. Yeah. How many candidates are you working with? Uh, we are working with uh, six or seven right now. Okay. <laughs> I apologize okay. if uh, if my number is a little bit off. You know, we just signed a few new candidates. So, nice. That's good. Though. Um, yeah. Some that I can't that I can't name uh, publicly. No, yet. we're not going to name anybody tonight. We just kind of want to talk about the the process of yeah, politics. Yeah, like if if I wanted to run for like my school board, I'd have to be elected by the people in my region, right? That's in correct. The region of that school board. And I wouldn't know what the hell to do. Like, you just go put signs on the grass. Yep. <laughs> You're good to go. It's definitely Call people lot, in the phone book. Definitely a lot more complicated. Yeah. Than that. But uh, yeah, so you would definitely you would definitely want to you know reach out to to your sphere of influence, your network, mm -hmm. people that you've worked with, family members. Um, you definitely would want to look into getting donations mm -hmm. and uh, to be able to fund. You know, direct mail and you gotta buy those yard signs. Yeah, right. you, gotta, you gotta buy the yard. Have a maid even. You can't just yeah. buy them. You, gotta... you have your kids with some crayons. You know, <laughs> exactly. Some yard signs. Exactly. So yeah. <laughs> It's, so yeah, at every level, you know, fundraising is important. Um, yeah, first, I mean, first you gotta find find the race that you want to, you know, be a part of, and then you gotta file, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Is it all federally filed, or is it like state filed? Yeah. So with uh, state of Washington, with local and state level races, you would file through the public disclosure committee or mm. the public disclosure commission. Pardon me. Um, and that's through the state of Washington. Was it any any elected official in the state of Washington? That's correct. Yeah, okay. any like your school board, city council, mm -hmm. mayors, um, state legislature, state Chinese senators, Senate, kind of governor. Mm -hmm. um, that's all through the state all, of Washington. All through the state. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any of your federal offices will be through the FEC. Senate, Congress, stuff like that. Yeah, president. Okay. <laughs> Do we have a president in Washington? <laughs> That'd be great. We should. Our Cascadia president. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe someday. Um, yeah, man, that's a crazy business to be in, though, right? It, it sure is. It's been it's been quite a roller coaster so yeah. far, um, and just coming out. So, you know, uh, in November we had a pretty big election, mm -hmm. right? Um, that seemed to last forever because there was a lot of challenges to it and whatnot. Um, now that we're in sort of uh, spring, and it's not quite an election year, although there's always stuff happening. Is this a busy time for you? It sure is, yeah. And we're, we're projecting that it's going to get even busier as we get into the week of May 17th. Oh, um, Because that's, that's filing week. Oh, okay. Washington. Okay. 
That's the deadline. Okay, the for deadline. whatever the next race is. So what what ele- what year are you looking at now for most of most of the races? So we're we're looking we're looking at filling up uh, our roster for 2021 and 2022. Okay. Okay. That's that's kind of right around the corner, huh? Yeah. 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 You know that time goes fast, almost. right? That's generally speaking, you know, about the this is about the time that you'd want to look into running for a 2022 race. Yeah. yeah. Especially if it's for a for a large office. Yeah. I yeah. I'm mostly a poli sci major myself, and I, I love politics because it's um, sort of like you know verbal combat, right? It's sort of it's sort of like football, but mental football, battle of ideas, you know, cerebral yes. football, right? It's battle of ideas. Mm-hmm. What uh, what inspires somebody? And you're 24, so what you know sort of gives you that? I want to do this uh, with my life thing. Yeah, so I think I think the biggest thing for me is I really enjoy working with the individual candidates, primarily working with uh, first a lot of first time candidates. You know, these aren't these aren't career politicians. These are your uh, kid school teacher, um, local business owner. What about just people that want to make a difference that like are inspired, yeah, exactly. right? They want to get up and do something. Especially That's cool. Especially at the local level too. Yeah, you know, yeah we're, probably a lot of first time runners right so exactly a lot of excitement behind that too that's cool exactly yeah yeah but for you personally i mean what what draws you to the political game so i definitely i definitely like the hustle um it it is you know constantly moving there's always something happening um i do like the relational aspect of, Mm -hmm. of politics you know it's politics is all about who you know and you know the the network that you can build the the uh What's the word I'm looking for? The it, it's it, the drive is there. Like if you if you make the right connection, that can lead you to 25 other connections. Mm-hmm. Um, Democracy, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everybody's voting. It's all about people power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Uh, there's a guy that I, I like to follow. His name's Jordan Peterson. He's kind of a bigger YouTube guy and lecturer. But one of the things that he was talking about in a book I was reading that really landed home, and I'm not like this. You guys are. So kudos to you. But a lot of people like bitch and moan about politics and raise hell about, oh, mm-hmm. F this, F that. This party sucks. This party's awesome. And they'll raise all this hell and stomp around and say how, how bad things are. But then they do nothing to yeah. get involved with yeah. local they politics. They go vote. It's like, what are right. you... Like, Political organizations are probably begging for volunteers. If you actually want to make a difference, yeah. go talk to your yeah. local political organization. I, for me, it'd be so <laughs> exciting to to see new blood, right, come into anything. Like here in Renton, we've got some great city council members, but they've mm-hmm. been on the city council for years. You know, uh, not that they're doing a bad job, but it always feels like we need, you know, in, mm-hmm. in uh, a boost of new energy, right? In flux of new yeah. ideas and stuff. It does feel a little bit, and uh, you guys can call me out on this if it's wrong, but it feels a little bit like the baby boomer generation's just holding on. <laughs> just holding on. Nationally, I think that's true, right? <laughs> Not letting that's go. True. Well, here's the thing is most of, like, say for, like, I'll call out my own party, um, <laughs> most of the Democratic leadership aren't even baby boomers. Yeah. They're, they're the silent generation. Right. Nancy <laughs> Pelosi, Joe <laughs> right. Biden. Yeah. And Chuck Schumer. Um, well, Chuck Schumer is a baby boomer. Is but, he? Uh, yeah. he's older. Clyburn, um, Leahy, like a lot of the, lot of the, lot of the uh, most powerful pre World War II. Yeah, the pre World yeah. War II <laughs> yeah. generation. Yeah, um, just a in there for ages. Yeah, and just, yeah, I'm, I'm all about you know. Yeah, it's got. I mean, the time marches on. It will change. <laughs> it yeah, has to. I, but I mean, it has always, to yeah. at this point. Um, yeah. Yeah. I guess what you're gonna do. My my biggest my biggest concern with with that is you know you have to you have to re- relinquish the the reins of power at some point you know the next generation mm-hmm. we're getting we're getting tired of being told to wait our turn yeah you know it's like it's like the Gen Xers got got passed over for a lot of the leadership positions and now millennials and you know. Gen Z, I'm kind of in that weird spot. <laughs> in that weird spot too. Right? I'm right in between baby boomer, or not baby boomer, Gen X and millennial. Yeah. Like 81 was yeah. the year I was born. What That's do you the, consider? I, I'm somewhere in between millennial and Gen Z. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. I'm definitely a Are you X. Dead center X. I'm dead center X. Man. So. <laughs> <laughs> right <on. laughs> yeah. You poor forgotten generation. Yeah. Well, you know, we just all laugh at you guys. 
<laughs> It'll be fun though. I think I think uh, diving into some of uh, these political debates that we're facing now, like the thing that happened in Georgia. Um, obviously, things are very polarized. There'll be some fun fun yeah. conversations we can have tonight. Yeah, looking forward to it for sure. Do you know what would help? What would help? If we grease the wheels with a little taste oh, of the oh, whiskey. Oh. <laughs> All right. All <laughs> That's right. never. We do have a new whiskey to try. We do. Which is nice. Um, all right. So you're suggesting we take a break and we find that bottle. Yeah. And we break it out. And we come back. And we come back. And keep this conversation going. Rock on. You guys with me? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> GTV. Well, welcome back. Yeah. I'm excited to grease the wheels and dive into some news and some politics of 2021, April 7th. It is okay. the 7th. We decided it's the 7th. Well, here, uh, I think it's the 7th. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to ask Google. It's the 7th. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> here we are. All right. Well. well, Charles. Yeah. This is a find of yours, my friend. It is. What did you find for us? I found on this fine evening. Lovely. Oh my goodness. Look brown liquor. Look at that top. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Holy moly. Dead guy whiskey from uh, Rogue, right? All right. Rogue right. Spirits. Very, very nice. nice. Very delicious. Rogue makes beer too, right? I feel like I've had a Rogue yes. beer before. Yes. Okay, cool. And they're um, somewhere in the Northwest, I think. Distilled in small batches from oh. the same malts as award-winning Dead Guy Ale. Ah, Dead Guy Ale. Ocean aged in oak barrels for at least two years. <laughs> That's all it says, though. And then it says you, you should from? drink moderately and not do it if you're pregnant. Where are you from, Dead Guy? It doesn't really say. I think he's local. Yeah, I feel like Dead Guy is like Portland or Seattle oh. or something. Aren't they supposed to put it where ah, it's there from? it is. Sorry. Distilled and bottled. By Rogue Spirits, Newport, Oregon. Newport, Oregon. All right, down the coast. Oh, that sound. <laughs> that weird sound. Whiskey, whiskey, ASMR. I have a weird little piece of uh, news for you guys while you pour. I was doing some research for the show. Okay. And I learned that during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Three Comma Club grew by 660. The Three Comma Club... The Billionaire Club. Oh, three comma Somebody that has more than a billion dollars. 660 people in the last year became billionaires that were not billionaires before. Bringing total to 2,755 billionaires in our world. Crazy. So we'll drink to you, 660. New Three Comma Club. May the world be kind to you. Oh, oh, that's surprisingly smooth. Yeah, it that is. was the first thing I noticed because usually I have like a little bit of a, a recoil and a like a little bit of a like a chest. It's almost citrusy to me. You guys get any of that citrusy? Yeah, I'm getting citrus yeah. notes, but it's very very mm. smooth. Yeah, I kind of get There's... like a little bit of that tropical, that tropical Tropi kind of yeah. flavor, like that undertone, like the on the back mm. end. There's not a burning Whoa. nose either. Yeah, that was the first thing I noticed. Mm -hmm. There is a nice, smooth sort of afterburn. It's a little smoky, maybe. So I'm yeah. tasting something. Although it's weird to go from, like, citrus to smoky. Yeah. They're not very really related. <laughs> I guess if you lit citrus on fire. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. You try that. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> well, I like it, man. I like it. Rogue Spirits Dead Guy Whiskey. Yeah, from Hawaii. And check it out. I also enjoy. That's three... Approvals from the approvals. DCG TV crew. Well done, Rogue. Dead guy whiskey. Rogue. So, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot, Bailey. All right. Uh, what political news in the last few days has maybe not shocked you, but has, you know, spiked the hair on the back of your neck? You know, I think, I think the biggest thing that, that I've been focusing on um, in the news for politics 
is the scandal with Congressman <laughs> Matt Gates. And Our I think, favorite Florida congressman. Matt yeah, the, the Florida man himself. Who, wait, uh, is it Florida congressman? Have you heard this? No. Okay. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> so, Matt Gates is in his second term, I believe. Something. Um, Arden, what is Arden, he? What role? Is second term? He's a congressman. Oh, okay. Uh, from the Panhandle of Florida. Um, I think it's the 5th District of Florida, something like that. Matt Gates was one of Trump's biggest supporters, right? Oh. Biggest defender. He was one of those guys that like busted into the skiff when they were trying to have a closed door, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Commission meeting about okay. uh, some of the impeachment stuff. Anyway, uh, what tell us about the scandal? Yeah, so uh, Matt Gates is being being accused of sex trafficking minors. <laughs> um, I believe I, I would need to. I don't have the news story in front of me to explain to everybody watching. But uh, how I understand it is that Matt Gates um, had a relationship with a seventeen-year-old girl and was giving her cash gifts and transporting her <laughs> travel right that's yeah. the big thing going across state lines makes it a federal federal <laughs> offense he brought her to washington dc allegedly um, and paid for her hotel room and meals and travel and all that stuff. Isn't Trump like tightly associated with QAnon, which is all against sex trafficking yes. and like yes. Yes. sex trafficking and, is like a big democratic and thing. And Gates's <laughs> biggest defender in the last few days has been Marjorie Green. Marjorie Taylor Green. Oh, I've heard Marjorie of her. Taylor yes. Green. Yeah. The crazy QAnon. Yeah, uh, yeah. She's been like the only one that I stand with Matt Gates kind of a thing. So <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, he's in a big world of shit right now. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot more to the story. Um, there's uh, uh, people saying that he used to go on the... Uh, he was a legislative... Is he, is he in married? Florida. He's not married. He's, oh. he's engaged. Oh, okay. But he used to be just a Florida state legislature, and he used to play this game with uh, some of his colleagues um, that who... You know, there was a point system if you mm -hmm. could uh, bed a intern or another staffer. staffer. Oh, you, get, you guys don't play that game? <laughs> no. And I will go on the record that I do not play that game. Apparently, apparently, he would go up to colleagues on the floor of not only the state house in Florida, but also the U.S. House of Representatives, and show off naked pictures and videos of women that he purportedly slept with. <laughs> Wow. The story just gets even stranger. Yeah. Wow. It just, and, it, and it's continues to grow. There's this whole thing about uh, his dad uh, accusing these guys of trying to extort money from him. I won't go too deep into detail because that's a whole rabbit hole thing um, that he's trying to blame all this on, which is not the case. But if, uh, it feels like the guy that was the firebrand, right? Uh, yeah. The right is going down. And it's play. funny how that that works out, man. We're like the, and I know that maybe he's not QAnon. He probably isn't. But the people that are the most rapidly like, and the, the example is like the most rapidly anti-gay end up getting low jobs in the bathroom yeah. stalls. Like, yeah, it's <laughs> like that old Shakespeare. Me thinks the lady doth protest too much. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Human human behavior, man. Yeah. Corrupted. That's a power. crazy. That is a crazy story, Kyle. You should do a little yeah. little digging into that. It's just uh, and, and there's a whole uh, subtext with uh, uh, a tax collector from I think the Orlando area. That's a friend of Gates. That sort of Jeez. got him involved in this, and that guy's under indictment, like thirty counts, I, and maybe rolling over and giving the uh, U.S. attorneys information on. Well, let me let me case. throw a little bit of shade towards the left just because nope, I, I do, do listen to a few uh, right right wingy things here and there. Do it. And this is not anywhere near on that scale at all. But it was pretty funny to learn in the news that the Washington Post of all places gave Biden four Pinocchios oh. for calling the Georgia voting law Jim Crow. And yeah. that was like overblown lefty craziness from what I've seen. Well, not lefty, Biden. Love going here's, Biden here's, here's the truth about the Georgia voting laws, though. They are specifically targeting African American and minority communities in Georgia to make it harder for them to vote. But how? How are they? How are they? So, um, you want to get so one of the, <laughs> I, I would say one of the biggest, one of the biggest ways that they're that this targets minority communities um, and just marginalized communities in general 
is the uh, fact that um, one of the provisions of the law was that they, they can close polling places at 5 p.m. Who can reach a polling place by 5 p.m.? Most of the time, polling places will close at 8 p.m. Um, and then the other provision was they're getting rid of uh, absentee ballots unless, unless for very specific reasons, okay. like you are sick, you're like traveling out of town, you're in the military. You know, there there's certain provisions um, that you can that you can obtain an absentee ballot. Gotcha. For the 2020 election, because of COVID, you're able to get an absentee ballot regardless of of any um, precondition. Extenuating circumstances. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Here's the biggest uh, thing for me is that each county has their own election board, right? Mm -hmm. They oversee their own elections. If there's issues, they're the ones that handle the issues. Well, this law would make it um, uh, official for the state election board to come in and basically push aside the county election uh, board, overrule, overrule everything they're doing, and basically take over the control of that election, which is a scary thought because Georgia is not going to be a blue state, it's going to be a red state, it's a swing state. locally. It's a swing state yeah. now. Um, I don't know, it feels like that. none of that sounds Jim Crow. It might not be the right thing to do, but like that that was like state-sanctioned segregation. To yeah. call it like that. When I think of Jim Crow, I think of laws that made it difficult for black people to register to vote, right? Like you would go in and you'd have to pass this crazy effing test, you know? Guess how many jelly beans there are in the jar, <laughs> right? And that's kind of what it feels like to me. My God, they're out, they're outlawing the ability for somebody to go up and hand a glass of water, a bottle of water, to somebody waiting in no, the No, no, that's a partisan. That's right. It's a partisan. Hours. You can give water to people. You just can't do it in like a Trump or a Biden nope. t-shirt. I think yeah, you it's, can't. It's, you can't it's, offer water can. or food to that's anybody not, waiting in line. I don't, what the, that's I what don't know about reads. that. I don't know. About that's what the law is. we got to take a break. I'll anyway. double click it. Double click that. <laughs> I'll double click it. We'll come it. back. We'll talk some more news. We'll yeah. talk some more politics because I know you guys are loving this. <laughs> See you soon. Double click that. I, uh, double click that. I'm gonna double click it. I think um, it's weird. It's been interesting to me that like uh, what the MLB game switch states, switch locations because of this yeah. law and, and Coca Cola has come out. Delta Airlines. Yeah. They, Do you know what the rights been calling Coca Cola? What's that? Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. You know the funny thing too was that uh, right after Trump called for a boycott of Coke. He was uh, photographed with a bottle of Diet Coke. Really? Yeah, so so. <laughs> he, he can't he can't give up the Diet Coke. Yeah, no. oh. yeah Diet Pepsi. He's got the same blood. But that's what they have McDonald's too, right? Like if you're gonna give up Diet Coke, you kind of have to give up McDonald's I don't too. Know. He loves that stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right on. What you gonna do? But yes, there's all other political news in the world. There is. What else is going on? Well. I mean, the one thing that I had, this is not American politics at all. It's actually not even politics. Never mind. I lied. I'm sorry. I was just reading. There was a headline that said, Brazil is the biological Fukushima of 2021. <laughs> Talking about how there's like 4,000 people dying a day wow. of, of COVID oh, wow. in Brazil. Like 4,000? Rampant strains. Like every week there's new crazy wow. mutations. <laughs> so apparently the zombie apocalypse starts in Brazil. Okay. All okay. Right. Just so you know. So cancel All your right. trip to Sao Paulo. Well, I got some good good <laughs> news. All right. All right. America's bird. What's America's bird? The eagle. The bald eagle, right? Mm -hmm. National symbol since 1782. Okay. Right? It was once on the brink of destruction. In fact, in 1963, uh, the population in America was down to 417 uh, mating pairs. Oh, the population. I thought like the, bald eagle. the idea of it being a symbol was under attack. No, no, no. <laughs> Just the population. And we thought the bald eagle might go away. I remember growing up, uh, oh. you know, in the late 70s and 80s, people talking about how the uh, population was decimated. Well, today, uh, because of efforts, uh, conservation efforts, um, and the laws regarding the hunting and stuff of them, there are now uh, estimated over 316,000 individual uh, bald eagles in just the continental U.S. 
Okay. Right? Uh, which equates to about 71,000 nesting pairs. Okay. Which means, you know, they'll hopefully be fertile and, and raise some... There's a limit there, right? Like, a population has to be so big if it's going to survive, like, mathematically, right? Yeah, so. and 417 couples doesn't sound like enough. too promising, yeah. right? Yeah. But, you know, through all those conservation, it took, what, 63 to... 2021 is like 40, 60 years, something like that, right? Then we're doing it. It's good. Yeah. What we're doing yeah. is working. That's good. Whatever it is working. So keep it up, America. Yeah. Hell yeah. Ah. Ah. <laughs> All right. So let's dive into some weird news. I got some funny stories. Okay. And we can keep going back and forth. So please. Yeah. Okay. I got it. But um, I have a, a reason or a potential reason or an explanation maybe about why things have been so funky lately. You see it. Start with a C and end with a Ovid? No. No, okay. No, this is pre COVID. Oh. Well, it's not really pre COVID, but it might be adding to the fuckery of it. Okay. So, 22 ancient Egyptian mummies have been paraded through the streets of Cairo. You saw saw this? this. Yeah. And so there's a a whole population of the world that is worried about the curse of the pharaohs as we parade these mummies around. Yeah. Um, Weren't they moving from one museum to another or something to that effect? I'm not sure, but I know they did like a parade in downtown Cairo. Yeah, and they they actually built like fancy car float things, right, that were all ornate. Yeah, these like three, four, five thousand year old mummies being paraded. And so the main thing that the mystics think occurred is that the Suez Canal was blocked for a week because of oh, this. Because of this. Shin de- shin oh, because of That was when the storm came up <laughs> yeah. and blocked the friggin' The Pharaoh road, said, right? fuck you, you will not have shipping for seven days. Does anybody have <laughs> Brendan Fraser's phone number? <laughs> we might need him on standby. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. So yeah. beware of the curse of the Pharaoh's All right. people. All right. Beware. Beware. I am not a marijuana partaker. Ah. Never have been. Don't mind it. Don't mind people that do. That's, you know, whatever you want to do. I ate a little bit of chocolate before the show. Did you really? Uh, (laughs) But, uh, do you guys realize that it's been 10 years since Washington and Colorado have legalized the Mary Jane, the cannabis, the sticky icky, the bud, the 420, the green, the chronic? Yeah. What else? Blunts, joints, what else is there? The sticky nuggies. Uh, the sticky nuggies. Um, and, and since that time, you know, in the past 10 years, several states have followed that, and we've got more yeah, uh, yeah. more and more talk about it nationally, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, I got some quick facts on uh, what has taken place from a study um, that these folks did on uh, what happened after it was legalized, okay? Okay, yeah. So legalization didn't seem to substantially affect crime rates. Okay. So crime rates, you know, reefer madness didn't happen. Uh, crime didn't go up um, All right. in these areas that it was it was legal. That is one incorrect prediction from the fifties. Right. Legalization <laughs> seems to have had little or no effect on traffic accidents or traffic fatalities. Okay. So, um, you know, like drunk drivers and stuff. Uh, fatalities and accidents have well, everybody up. knows stoned drivers aren't causing accidents. <laughs> I mean, maybe a fender bender, but not nothing in high speed. You know, reefer madness, you know, <laughs> yeah. don't worry about it. So, uh, legalization has barely affected the overall price of marijuana. So, everybody thought, oh, you know, you get it from your dealer, what is it, 25 bucks a uh, gram baggie now or whatever? No, no, it's cheaper now than it was. Yeah, it so it, it hasn't it yeah. hasn't affected the it's price. A little, it's like, like $10 uh, cheaper an eighth. Like what, what I would usually spend $40 on, I can now get for like 20 to 30 Okay. Like okay. And they're better products, too. Okay. Um, legalization has created jobs mm-hmm. over estimated 321,000 nationwide. That's impressive. That's a pretty And that's good, only in like what, like twenty percent of the states ish? Yeah, not even yeah, yeah. not even that much. And legalization has been really good for state budgets. In fact, Colorado has collected over twenty million dollars per month. <laughs> California over fifty million dollars per month. What are they doing? Where's the nice roads and schools? Jeez, right. Right, guys. I thought that. <laughs> what did we go for? Maybe, maybe they, you know, take it in, you know, edibles or something. <laughs> CBD. Oil. Anyway, I just thought that was fascinating yeah. to look back. You know, it's been ten years. I know there's a lot of controversy around it. Um, I remember Washington, Colorado, were like, yeah, 
we're done. Let's go. Um, yeah. And there's, oh, you're going to, you know, it's going to create havoc. And uh, it really hasn't. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I got a few more stories. Okay. Have any new stories like to share with us in particular? We, we research and prepare, so it's okay if you don't. <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead and share. Okay. Well, you guys know who Elon Musk is? Yes. Do you know what his company Neuralink is? I've heard of it. Not familiar with Neuralink. It's a company that's working on technology to put actual like computers in your brain, like no. mi- micro like microcomputers and yeah. diodes, with the idea of a, a, a original or in, initially helping sick people. With, like, Aren't I going to get one of those when I get my COVID vaccine shot? <laughs> Well, not in your brain. No, oh, okay. It's just going to be a microchip. <laughs> no. that they... But anyway, his company Neuralink wants to do this to help with brain injury and then move on to like enhancing people. Maybe you can hear the okay. text messages. But anyway, his co-founder of the company, Max Hodak, is his name, has announced the technology for Jurassic Park actually exists and we could be there in less than 15 years. Wow. So we could apparently make dinosaurs the technology that exists today. He said it would take maybe 15 years of breeding and we'd have full-on dinosaurs. Okay. Um, and, and I know, you know, a lot of Jurassic Park, what was part of that was taking DNA from, um, like, mosquito blood, yeah. right? Or mosquito eating that got stuck in, uh, you know, amber mm-hmm. for millions of years, and they were able to extract some DNA, but then they mixed it with, like, frog DNA or yes. Gila monster DNA to kind of create what they did. Are you, are you saying that that... Yes. Is, okay. That's what he's saying. Um, now, I didn't read deep enough to know the exact... Uh, hear the scientific process, but I imagine... And I've read some stuff about this in the past. The idea would be, like, the, a mastodon would be the easiest thing, because you could take mastodon DNA and breed it through yeah. an elephant into the mastodon in a few generations. But why stop there? Yes. Why not breed a mastodon with, like, some tiger DNA? Right? Well, that wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. It's got to be It's got to be compatible. It'd be like a miger. But it's like if you breed a donkey <laughs> and a horse, you get an ass. Right. Or a mule. So some things just aren't they're uh, yes, not compatible. Mule. Right. And then mules are like But yet sterile, you can right? breed... A German Shepherd and a Bug Dog. You could. You could. In theory, yeah. Theory. In theory. <laughs> yeah. Would you want to? <laughs> hmm. Attack pugs. Putting it out there. <laughs> I mean, it might be a new, uh, a new uh, specialty breed, right? They got they got a specialty breed of the Pomsky, which is a Siberian Husky mixed with a Pomeranian. So serious. <laughs> the Pomsky. Yeah, they're, they're so cute, though. Are they like little little Pomeranians, but yeah. they look like a husky? Oh my yeah. goodness! Oh, I might have to get one of those. Oh, okay, awesome. I, I've got a I've got a segue into an animal news thing. Okay, go into the animal. News. Okay, okay, okay. I got an animal news. So in Anchorage, Alaska. Oh, one of my favorite places. There's been a plague. Okay. Of ravens stealing groceries from people in their parking lot of the grocery store. Is it a murderer of ravens? It's not. It's, a of it's crows. not a, it's a gang of ravens. I no. Let me think about it. It'll come. There's to something like 700 ravens. While you're thinking about it, let me read you a quote from a victim. Okay. Matt Lawallen. They know what they're doing. It's not the first time. <laughs> they're very fast, so I think they've got a whole system here. You know, As ravens and ravens crows are friggin' steal, smart, man. And steal they've got great meat, memories, right? Steal yeah. groceries. They will remember you. If you went up and tried <laughs> to kick one, and then you went back like two years later, it would remember you. That's scary. That's scary. They're friggin'. All right, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you two more seconds. Can you think of what the group of ravens is called? Well, we already determined that it's not a murder. It's so. not, but it's similar. It's like murder it's a, light uh, massacre. Oh, it's a murder light. It's a uh, it's a killer of it's a manslaughter. It's a manslaughter. No, no, li- way lighter. It's an unkindness. Unkindness. An unkindness. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. An unkindness of ravens. I don't know if I like that. We'll be back, people. We'll see you soon.
felt weird listening to it. So <laughs> why? I don't know because I found a weird sample in line and it was titled "Some Girl on Acid," and she was just like speaking <laughs> weirdness. And so I sampled into that song and that it was a weird experience. Nice. So, is it on SoundCloud? It is on SoundCloud. Hey. SoundCloud.com. Don't scab games. games. So hey guys, I got a couple more pieces of end news yeah, for us. And I think Charles, you have another piece of news. Yeah. And then we're gonna go into the... Whoa. We've got a beast. We've got a critter. So my first piece of animal news is that I cut the balls off my cat. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, yeah, you know, as um, Bob Bob Barker always Bob said, spay and neuter your pets. pets. Yeah, so that happened today or well, yesterday. Yeah. He's in recovery, but he seems to be awfully okay. So, he seems to be awfully jumping around, yeah, which is, I think, the vet told me he shouldn't do. But how do you stop a cat from doing that? Which maybe he's more, you know, aerodynamic, yeah, without <laughs> the anchors, maybe. Yeah. I just got a flap, maybe <laughs> it's very flappy. Oh my good rudder. <laughs> All right, so my first bit of news, and this is animal news, that's how I roll. Um, did you know that in the past, I think it was two weeks ago, that the dog surfing championships happened? I did not know this. They did. The dog surfing championships occurred in Florida, okay. where all interesting things happen. And this year, a yellow lab named Lily took first prize. Lily? Yes. I'm going to put a well, picture. No, Lily. Right here with Movie Magic. Okay. So good job, Lily. Nice, Lily. Good job. Well done. What uh, is it like? Uh, I know in surfing competitions, it's usually like, you know, it's judged on how long you stay up and how well you ride the wave and stuff like that. I believe this was longest on the board. Oh, okay. stay up the longest. They helped them get started, and then it was the whoever stayed up the longest. Um, and all proceeds benefited the Humane Society. So nice. Nice. But Lily took the prize. Right on, Lily. Yes. My other piece of animal news comes from the insect kingdom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you remember the, the movie Sharknado? I, I oh, never yeah. saw it, but I know what you're talking yes, about. Yes, I never saw it either. There's like eight of them or something, uh, right? Yeah. Well, residents of Hoboken, New Jersey experienced something very strange last week. Okay. Well, there was a big rain, and a woman went out onto the street after the rain stopped and saw a wormnado on the sidewalk. It was a tornado of worms. Oh. All over? All over the sidewalk in a very perfect tornado spiral form. Really? Yeah, I have a picture. Okay. Put it up. <laughs> uh, I'm not a big fan of the worms, but... Then avoid Hoboken and wormnado. <laughs> In case you were planning a trip to Hoboken, yeah. cancel that nonsense. Yeah, I, I was not planning on going to Hoboken. <laughs> yeah. It's too bad there wasn't a unkind of crows. <laughs> ravens. No, ravens. Ravens. Hanging out. An unkindness. <laughs> unkindness. An unkindness of ravens. Of ravens. Yeah. They would have had a field day. Yes. It's true. We got some dinner <laughs> in. Yeah, for sure. Wormnado. Right on. Hmm. Is that it for your for your news? It is. It is. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Sorry. No, no it's worries. Done. It's over. Have you guys heard of a non fungible token, an no. NFT? I have heard of that. Where did, I, did you tell me about that? I told you about that a couple. I was going to do this news story last week, but oh, we got okay. so wrapped up with Damon and the ships. So. Yes. But a non fungible token is a piece of art, or it's a record album, or it's a uh, some kind of unique thing that is digital okay non-fungible non-fungible um gronkowski uh, oh the uh, patriots the gronk patriots now tampa bay guy um sold some digital football cards non-fungible um uh cards and he sold them for hundreds of thousands of dollars just it's supposed to be one of a kind with like a digital signature right how do they it's interesting. Okay. You've heard of the band Imagine Dragons? Yes. They sold an NFT album. Radioactive. Yeah. <laughs> I can go with my whole life without ever Jack, <laughs> Jack Dorsey, who created Twitter, sold his very first tweet as an NFT for $2.5 million. Okay? Hmm. So these things are one of a kind digital collectible. Um, it's transferable. Nothing's one of a kind. It's held Copy on it. a server. I don't pretend to understand it, but some kind of server it's that, like, bitcoins are on. Okay. Right? Um, 
but you know, no two NFTs are the same. Um, but people are spending millions, two point five million dollars for a tweet. People are spending a god awful amount of money for this and stuff. People have too much money. And I wonder if it's going to be, you know, uh, something that's going to be worth something in, you know, a year, five years, ten years. If they're going to get their money back, if the, you know, the value is going to hold. You should probably sell it within the next at least twenty years. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a long time. That's years. a long time, but like digital technology. I mean, it, one, it, nothing's truly uncopyable. I wouldn't imagine. Yeah, somebody I, can figure out how to copy it and then sell it right out from underneath you. I, I don't understand what a non fungible like token is. I, I understand like with the album with with people doing songs and albums. Like you remember, Two Life Crew was a Two Life Crew, or was it the it was the Wu Tang Clan yeah. oh, had that yeah. one single copy of that album and that mm-hmm. that smarmy dude the the pharma sale pharma guy pharma guy yeah uh, ended up buying it for millions of dollars. But mm-hmm. I mean, it was you know <laughs> they didn't have to go through the whole process of advertising it and getting it on the radio and oh, stuff. It's kind of the token. same thing, but. It it's it's not a actual tangible record that they can hold. It's just a digital right. file. We should non fungible token the very first episode of DCG TV. I wonder how much we get. <laughs> so there, there are services that'll help you build these things and then put them up for auction, right? <laughs> so I don't know. Hey, I don't know. Hey. I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know. So it might be something to look into. Yeah. Well, I think we should take just a really quick break. So we have plenty of time for a certain something? A uh, yeah, certain something. You know what? Maybe this would be a good time to hear from our sponsor. That uh, would be a good time to hear from our sponsor. All right. Well, does our sponsor need an introduction? No. Let's just go. <laughs> All right. Just play it. We'll see you soon. All right, man. Have you or someone you love been injured by the presidential dogs? Then don't hesitate to call Wiener and Cox, attorneys at law. We will fight tooth and nail to make sure that you get the justice that you deserve. Don't hesitate. Call Wiener and Cox, attorney at law. Paid attorney spokesman. Well, uh, yeah, you know, um, the Biden uh, puppies are quite a handful out here. I would love to get bitten by the Biden puppies. I think I would, too. And call out uh, Wiener and Cox. I also hear <laughs> Set that. Set myself up for life. I also hear <laughs> that uh, those dogs have been crapping all over the White House, really? too. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not just Trump that crapped all over the White House. Well, they got, like, an old, aged dog from an animal shelter. Right. Like, one, that's noble. Right. And two, that dog's not going to be very well trained, and you can't train that dog. Like, well, and imagine, too. I mean, you're going from, and the Bidens probably had a nice estate in Delaware, right? <laughs> big house, big big yard and stuff like that but you know they probably had a few you know people that work for them cooks and cleaners and stuff but now you're going into this environment where you've got hundreds of people that work on the grounds right yeah so uh, secret service <laughs> friggin secretaries you know all kinds of stuff and uh biden's got to be on some crazy weird schedule right like oh yeah and, and dr dr biden as well dr biden as well to yeah. hire uh caesar caesar the oh. the it's no, 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 the dog whisperer. The dog whisperer, yeah. Yeah, why'd you? I don't know, doesn't he do that? <laughs> I think so. so like that. <laughs> to keep you know, bring you home and make you part of my pack. Well, you huh. have to, you have to think, you know, like the, like the move is incredibly stressful, and the dogs yes. like completely uprooting their lives and especially older, everything. yeah, everything. They older do. dogs, yeah. um, younger dogs too. You know, like the, like when I when I moved around, you know, Con was having some issues. Yeah. Uh, you know, getting getting along with. With the new environment, so yeah, I completely understand. Yeah, I heard Baron Trump was going around biting people and sitting <laughs> on the carpet too. Oh it's just God. a rumor. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> yeah, well, they just pull out of the pound and. I'm happy. All I can say is I'm happy that this is the biggest scandal of the Biden yeah, so far, so right? Far. So far, <laughs> so far. It is funny how biting people. The scandal of like. The left and the right is such a different scale. <laughs> it's so different. Right. right. Obama wears a tan suit and it's yes. a freaking scandal. Yeah. Biden's dog acts up because it got a new environment. Trump gets caught on tape oh talking God. about like grabbing women by the pussy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, scandal. Yeah. Like, Those uh, things no. aren't really the no. same yeah. with that. What do we got coming up, Kyle? <laughs> it's time for crazy. That beat didn't work. No, I didn't like Crazy Eights. Well, it was just a random attempt at music and accompaniment. And guys, this this Crazy Eights, we're going to keep with the theme. And I think mm. it's uh, 
best political achievements, right? Yes. In our history. Is it? Could it be older than us? It could be older than us. I hope so. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> In the history of the world. Not the world. I mean, we specifically went kind of more... You know, I think we went to right. this, yeah. Well, I, 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 at least I, Western. At least yeah, Western, at least Western. I mean, I don't know much about... I, I went I went U.S. myself. Okay, but I did I'm, mostly. I'm all American, too. All right, you guys. Rah, rah. <laughs> well, I'm going to start then, because right. my one non-American, but it was the basis for a lot of what America was oh. built on, and that is the Magna Carta from 1215 between King John and a group of rebel barons. Um, but it was wow. an agreement to get these barons to sort of fall into line by guaranteeing some freedoms and rights to the people. Uh, it gave protection to church rights, protection from the barons, for, uh, protection for the people from illegal imprisonment, um, gives them access to swift justice and limitations on taxes, feudal taxes right. to the king. So uh, Magna Carta was kind of the basis mm -hmm. for the Declaration of Independence and right. modern uh, English. Moving law from and like all that the stuff. feudal monarchy to like the individual rights, yeah. democracy. Yeah. Keep the king, yeah. but hey, we yeah. gotta make sure the yeah. people are a little bit taken care of. And they had to renew it like every year or every king had to sort of renew this chart. Do you know how long it lasted? 1215 to today. It really it yeah. lasted that I think oh, wow. it's still. I think they still have to renew it. Um, I'm not sure. That's like 800 and something years ago. That's, history, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 So that's where I'm gonna start at number eight. So cool. let's go. Let's go clockwise. Let's yeah. Go. Let's do it. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't really go like in in too much of a sequential order here. No um, sequence. So, so don't 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 read it like jump that. all over the place. Um, but what I'll say what I'll say is the 1872 establishment of Yellowstone National Park. Um, hey. Because. I like because, that. Uh, oh, yeah. Starting the National Park Service. I mean, that happened much later, but yeah. um, the establishment of our first national park, at Yellowstone, set a precedent for conservation, uh, right? conservation yeah. and other national monuments to preserve them for future generations. Yeah, and That's a big, huge. big part of that was Theodore Rex, right? Uh, Theodore Roosevelt Teddy. was big on on getting those all set up. Yeah, and that was later. Um, yeah. it was actually under the the Grant administration. Okay. When oh. Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Okay. I've heard that man is one of the uh, presidents we've had that the most didn't want to be president. Grant. Like that guy did not want to be president. Yeah, Ulysses? Yes. Yeah. Like he was not. I want to go fight a war. <laughs> he was not wired for the job. Yeah. All right. Well, my. my um, I'm going to start at the bottom. Is, uh, and I don't know what the political decisions were. I don't know if there was one. But the, the fall of the Berlin Wall. When East Germany and West Germany were finally. Reunited. Okay. Like that was a big moment to end. That like was the, kind of the signal. That was the the end of the Cold War. End of the Cold War was the sign of the fall of the of the Soviet Union. Yes, right? and the sign of the fall of the Soviet yeah. Union. Like the end of the Cold War, two global superpowers yeah. like on the edge, building nukes. Like that was a and, good thing. And to I don't start. know how old <laughs> how old you were. I know Bailey wasn't uh, born quite yet. I was. I wasn't uh, even a twinkle. I was, was even a twinkle. I was a twinkle. <laughs> <laughs> were you a twinkle? I remember, you know, West Berliners and East Berliners taking sledgehammers to the, and watching it on the news. Yeah. As those guys, as David Hasselhoff. Uh, you know, saying and did his thing. So, Hassel off. Yeah. Huh. Off. All right. <laughs> Go off. He's big in Berlin. <laughs> All right. Uh, my number seven uh, was, and this is kind of a long one, sorry guys, is the Reconstruction Amendments. It's the 13th, 14th, and 15th so Amendments. Post Civil War. Post Civil War. Um, the 13th officially ended slavery. Mm -hmm. The 14th guaranteed due process and equal protection under the law. And the 15th guaranteed the right to vote shall not be infringed for any citizen, no matter race, color, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or any prior condition, meaning, you know, previously a slave. So I think those three sort of set up, it would take years for a lot of this stuff to be, you know, um, come to fruition. Well, we're still, we're still on that path. We're still, we're still, still on, on that path. path. Yeah. 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 But... Those those amendments just really uh, sort of laid the groundwork for all that. Totally, totally. I agree. Totally. Yeah, and I'll uh, I'll I'll kind of continue on your role here. Yeah. Uh, with the Voting Rights Act ah. and the Civil Rights Act of okay. 1964 yes. and 1965. Nice. Oh, yes. Yeah. Johnson, even Eisenhower was in on on some of those uh, Civil Rights Acts, right? Um. Yeah. With. Uh, 
he he's the one that sent the 101st Airborne down to yeah. uh, Little Rock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but and, but ten shirts. Lyndon Lyndon Fine LBJ got those signed. Yeah. Well, and I, I've heard that like that period, like the 50s, 60s, almost into the well, kind of in the 70s, was like the a period of um, the Supreme Court really pushing civil rights. Like it became this center thing where yeah. it was a big for like a big huge progress was made during that time that kind of stopped sometime in the seventies or eighties, yeah. but like, that was a big civil rights step. Yeah, and the Kennedy administration utilizing the FBI um, to go after um, government officials and law enforcement um, yeah. with a new charge of uh, of infringing upon somebody's civil rights. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that was a big the FBI down uh, uh, Mississippi, uh, Mississippi yeah. burning, all that stuff. Yeah. We got our moments. Yes, <laughs> we got our moments. All right, Kyle, go for it. All right. Well, my, mine's a little uh, squishy, but it's really America's willingness to critically admit and work on our faults and errors. Like, how many countries do you hear raise their hand and be like, uh, "That was stupid. We made a that was a bad decision." <laughs> like, we're very self-critical as a country, at least in my experience. Yeah, and I like that, and it's, it's rare in I think the history of the world for a country to, to do that. Yeah, I think I think that there's you know very few examples where because I think in a lot of countries you experience a lot of nationalism. Yeah. Um, like say like in China or Russia, um, you couldn't you couldn't criticize the government there mm-hmm. or past decisions, and I think like say in the United States or Germany we can. Do a lot of self-reflection. I think I think that the United States definitely has a lot of you know self-criticism, but mm-hmm. also there's also that aspect of you know what are we going to do about it? Yeah, yeah. You know, there there's that whole debate there that you know <laughs> maybe we're not doing enough to to fix what happened yes. in the past. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, right on. Uh, my number six is the Nineteenth Amendment. Do we all know what that did? Guaranteed the other half of our population the right to vote. 100, 101 years ago? 100 years yeah. ago. It's yeah. not been that long. It was not, it doesn't seem like <laughs> yeah. that long ago. Uh, yeah. You know, it finally passed. So women uh, were finally guaranteed the right to vote. That's huge. Across the board. Huge. Sure. I think it was in the state of uh, Wyoming that uh, where women were like the first state that allowed women to vote. Yeah. Wyoming. Yeah, and didn't oh, yeah. they have like a, a female politician, like a congressperson that came out of Wyoming? I don't know if it was Congress or if it was like at the state legislature. It might have been at the state legislature. Yeah, yeah. Huh. they might have been one of the first states too to have a female governor. Maybe so. I'm not sure. You'd, yeah, you have those, to fact check me on that. Wild I'm West, not, wild not west women are no joke. Yeah, no joke, man. Yeah, wild West women. All right, Bailey, give us your number six. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so I'm going to come in at number six with the National Labor Relations Act, oh. um, establishing. Uh, the rights of workers uh, to unionize and to collectively bargain. Yeah. No more nice. kids working in mines. No more kids working <laughs> in mines. Well, eight hour work week or eight hour work day, uh, 40 hour work, work week, you know, paid holidays, stuff like that. I mean, thank you, union. Right? Well, yes. Yeah. That's something yeah. that's near and dear to my heart. All right. Well, I'm going to pass on really quick to you, Charles. Okay. Because my number uh, next one was civil rights. Which okay. Is covered. Well, let's do this. Let's take a quick break. All right. And then we'll come back and finish off our list. Indeed. We'll see you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, people of all types. All three of you. I need to make some more songs. We keep hearing the same songs. But they're good, man. They're groovy. You know the ones I like the best are kind of have that that uh, Wild West. Ah, uh, the Westies. You know, the yes. Westies. Yeah, so if you could do that. All right. That would be kind of fun. We should do a rendition of uh, Friends in Low Places, the old Garth Brooks song. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that would be pretty fun. I got friends in low I'm going to throw it out. I'm going to throw it out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We will sing at least two choruses of that song for you if we get more comments on this video than any other video we've posted. That'd be like four comments and we're good. You don't have to quantify it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're back with uh, Crazy Eights. And Charles, you were on your number five or four. Okay, my number five. Uh, All right. My number five, hugely important. Um, you know, there's this old saying that, um, hi, I'm... I'm from the government and I'm here to help is like the scariest thing. Well, in the 1930s, you wouldn't have thought that with FDR's New Deal, right? Yes. 
created uh, banking reform, yes. uh, SEC reform, uh, created uh, uh, jobs programs. Uh, Social Security, right? I don't know if Social Security came from that. Did it come from that? Um, but yeah, just getting, I mean, we were in the midst of you know, farm programs, uh, farm aid, all that stuff. Uh, we were in the midst of a Great Depression, a Dust Bowl in the Midwest, um, just a shit show. Yeah. Uh, you know, and FDR came out with these really bold and strategic programs mm -hmm. and pulled us right out. Didn't hurt that we had a little thing called World War II that was right around the corner. But guess what? But them freeways you made, FDR, I'm still driving on them, and they still work. Thank you. The bridges, you know, it's been a long time. We need to get those fixed. And the dams. And the dams. Yeah. yeah. All right, Bailey, what's like your number it. five? Like it. It's huge. Yeah, so I'm going to come in to number five. Uh, I'm going to go with McGirt v. Oklahoma. Oh, cool. that was a That was a recent one. McGirt. Uh, and in that, I don't, I don't necessarily like the circumstance why that was ruled. Uh, it was, it, it, it was the decision um, that the Supreme Court made uh, that uh, basically said that based on a uh, past treaty with Native Americans in Oklahoma, um, any, the jurisdiction that the crime was committed in. Uh, and I believe it was murder, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And uh, that McGirt was uh, that had murdered somebody on the jurisdiction of a Native American reservation, uh, which is basically the whole eastern half of yeah. the state of Oklahoma. Yeah. And I don't like the circumstance of how of you know what happened, but I think that it was a landmark decision um, for Native American rights. Saying so what did what? So give us a quick brief. So McGirt killed somebody on Native American land. That wasn't that wasn't classified as Native American land. But by an older treaty, the, like an older treaty classified. An older treaty, yes. Okay. And yeah. so did McGirt have to stand trial in a Native American court? So he stood trial in Oklahoma court. Okay. Um, and he appealed, and it went up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court, in a five to four ruling. Um, determined that he, in fact, based on an old treaty, had actually um, been in the wrong jurisdiction, been tried in the wrong jurisdiction. He should have been tried um, in Native American court. Uh, tribal uh, or in tribal, so did tribal he get his, uh, his case overturned, his conviction overturned? I need to look at the facts of okay. the case again, but uh, what it opened the door to is that um, other people that had committed crimes um, in, those, in those areas uh, that had been now uh, reclassified to the old border um, could now appeal their case wow. and, you know, seek either overturn, uh, to either overturn the case or have it retried in Native American court. See that, America? If you sign a treaty, you got to live by it. Eventually. <laughs> Eventually. Could take a century. Could take yeah. a century. Maybe two. And hear that, whoever's, uh, res that is, Cherokee or whoever does it. Right. Beef up the legal system. Yeah. You're about to get some headline news. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right, Kyle, what you got? Uh, my next one is uh, it kind of goes back to your Magna Carta, but it's leading the world out of monarchy and feudalism. I feel like America really did that. Um, we were the first to kind of shake the reins of the monarchy off, and then the French followed, and there was a, a huge revolution. But America did that first. Well, and a lot of people won't know this, um, but do you know? Do you know where the second the second revolution in the Western Hemisphere took place? I don't. It was on the. It was on the. Uh, it was in Haiti. Really? That was the second. That was the second revolution that happened here huh. in the Western Hemisphere. Haiti. I was thinking it was going to be Mexico against the French, but. Well, that Mexico versus the Spanish first, and then and sure. then the yeah. and then the uh, and then the French. Oh, made okay, got it. Yeah. That was that was like toward the Civil War. Era. Yeah. <laughs> you want to hear something embarrassingly awful? What was that? When do you think Canada finally shook the crown? Oh, I don't think they have, have they? Well, they they yeah, kind no, of they, they, they kind of did. <laughs> kind of. She's still, still on the money. Money. But like Canada finally became independent in like 1983. Wow. <laughs> wow. They do have some cool money. But it's all it's the queen. It's still not fully independent. God save the queen. <laughs> God save the queen. That is good stuff. All right. Well, my number four is, and I think we we might all have this, but the Emancipation Proclamation. Yes. Right. I mean, Lincoln, F and A, dude. Um, 
it took a lot for him to do that too. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, with with uh, inside his own party, uh, fighting with Congress at the time, in the midst of a war, um, for him to do that took a lot of balls. That guy had some big brass cojones. Yeah. But uh, um, by the way, for the people out there. Um, I go down YouTube rabbit holes occasionally, as we all do. Um, Thank you. And there is an insanely good series on the Civil War. By it's like the American Historic Association Civil War. But I don't know. But it's on YouTube. They're they're very popular. But they're really good. Like revisualizing the battlefields and oh. maps and graphs. I love that stuff. But That's I was cool. quite taken and went a good three and a half hours deep. Maybe I have more. to check it out. Yes, definitely. Yeah. All right, Bailey, what you got number four, sir? All right, I'm going to come in at number four. Um, I'm going to come back to your new deal, and I said the 1935 founding of the Social Security Administration. Okay. Um, yes. Just to, just to kind of uh, expand on that idea. Um, I, I see it as very important just because having a strong social safety net for those that are most in need, so your retirees, and that really just opened the door for people to be able to retire and not have to not have to work because we, we rapidly expanded into this urbanized society where it wasn't like you could just have a farm, pass it along to your kids, and then sort of like yeah. rely upon them. Right. Um, so I, I definitely see that as a as a landmark. Uh, part of the New Deal. Yeah, and you think about now, uh, you know, my dad's company, uh, where he got his job in 1962, um, he ended up with a pension from his company and also a pension from his union. But uh, nowadays, uh, it's rare to find a pension. You might get mm -hmm. stock options, you might get a 401k, you might get some matching money. But can you imagine that, you know, the person that works, um, you know, as a mechanic, all his life for a small shop or something and right. and doesn't have the means you know what what the hell would they do without social security or somebody that was like self-employed or yeah you know i don't want to plan my future <laughs> yeah i want the government to plan my future <laughs> that, was, that, was back in, that was back in the day when most companies were small businesses right and then you had some like really huge monopolies <laughs> right yeah <laughs> All right, Kyle, lay it on us. All right, well, my next one is, um, and you know what? The other ones that I have, two of them have already been said, but this one is not. It's kind of squishy, though. It's becoming uh, the world's superpower as oh. America and ushering in a new era of world peace. And the world's not super peaceful, but the world is way more peaceful now than it ever has been. Do you guys consider America the only superpower left? Yes. China's coming up. China's coming up. The, the definition of a superpower is to be able to project your your military strength on two different fronts, and I don't believe that any other country has that capability as of right now. Okay. But China's That's a good, that's a good definition. Close. I like that. I would I, yeah, they're, they're still pretty far away from, from that okay. just because they don't have a very capable navy. Oh. Um, they, they have a very regional navy. Yeah. They can definitely challenge American mm -hmm. hege uh, hegemony in the South China Sea yeah. and in the Pacific, right. but uh, other than that, they, they don't have very many People capabilities. In Los Angeles and San Francisco ain't tripping about Chinese yeah. boats. People yeah. in yeah. Beijing are probably tripping about American boats. And Japan has got a <laughs> you know, Chinese Navy. And the Japanese Navy is nothing to, sn to sneeze at sure. either. They, they definitely are very capable yeah. um, mm -hmm. with their self-defense force and, of course, with their uh, constitutional change where they're going to be expanding their military. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. All right, who went? Who went? You went? I went. Okay, okay, my number three, Constitution of the United States. Constitution. There we go. One of the greatest pieces of paper ever written upon. Um, just barely. I'm not even going to go into it. Ever-changing living document. Exactly. <laughs> That's what makes it so yeah. great. Yeah. Um, so I'll come in on my next one uh, with, I'm going to say Obama's Affordable Care Act. Really? Yeah. Um, I think I think that, that was a huge step towards uh, towards a single payer healthcare system. It's not. It wasn't perfect when it was introduced, not but perfect. but it, uh, it definitely definitely draw a lot. It drew a lot of bipartisan support, and um, we also we also got to get millions of people insured. What's really stupid to me is that everything on the left and the right would agree with Americans should all have good health insurance. Yeah. Like everybody agrees with that statement. Right, right. It's just the getting there that's such a pain in the ass for some reason. Yeah. I don't get it. All right, Kyle, lay it on us. 
Ah, I'm going to pass it on to you. My number three was FDR's New Deal. Okay. Uh, my number two, even greater than the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Oh, right. Yes, uh, what would the Constitution be without the Bill of Rights? It we really, hold these truths to be self-evident. Yeah, I mean, just uh, it laid laid it out. Uh, the Constitution didn't go far enough, and and they had to come up with the Bill of Rights. But we're low on time, so I'm going to flip it. All right. Um, where was I at? I was uh, I was going to say Roe v. Wade. Oh. Ah. And access women's access to to safe and legal abortions. Yeah. Roe v. Wade. It's a good thing that's happened in this. We'll come back to this off. Was good. All right, we're back. We're, back. we're coming back to the top one and two of Crazy yeah. Eights. So Bailey, what's your right. number two, my son? All right, um, I'm gonna come in with uh, the Clean Air and Water Act. Okay. Um, I think that I think that it's very relevant. You know, 1972. Yeah, it was something like that. What they is might, it? It might have been offset a little bit. I don't remember the dates off the top of my head. What makes you think people want clean air and water? <laughs> like, did you poll or did you do? Well, well, I can definitely tell you that uh, some people voted for a president that uh, never <laughs> sent a lot of the protections. Yeah. Um, just just four years ago. Yeah, and as bad as a guy you think Nixon was, I mean, he'll always be remembered as a guy that almost got you know. Uh, impeached or whatever, um, he did sign those into law. So, <laughs> still <laughs> correct. All right, Dean, what you got, Kyle? Uh, my number two is electing a non-old white man president. Oh, <laughs> I think that was a really cool thing that America did. Yeah. Other countries beat us to the punch as far as hiring people that aren't old and white. Yeah. But we finally got there. Yeah. Um, well, England had a thing. woman, but yeah. she was old and white. Uh, Germany's had uh, a woman. Dude, Merkel's like a powerhouse of the world right now. She is, yeah. Um, But India, India's had uh, female presidents or prime ministers, right? right? Um, Who am I forgetting? There's been plenty. There's been plenty. Canada has not. Canada's been all... Well, Trudeau's a young... Trudeau's a young white guy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, there's been been a lot of... There's been a lot of countries that have elected other than old white men. Um... (laughs) Well, it doesn't count if it's like India or Japan sure. or China. Right. Yeah. Like Costa Rica, for instance, they, they were the first country in the Western Hemisphere to elect a female oh. to, to their right. highest office. Right on. Oh. Good stuff. Well, good on you, sir. Um, my number one. Number one. Declaration of Independence. Here's a bunch of farmers and tradesmen mm-hmm. who got together and said, F you. We're not going to take it anymore. Well, that follows the thread of like the Magna Carta and like the whole. There's there's a, a theme here of like we got our flaws, but yeah. it's been a good journey so far. Yeah, absolutely. And and these guys, you know, you're you know seventeen uh, seventy uh, six seventy five. These guys are getting together, having slaves. <laughs> for sure, uh, but getting together and going, you know, this is this is bullshit, man. We're we're over here, they're over there. We get mm-hmm. nothing from them, but we're sending all of our money over there. Uh, we want more than this. Well, and they they designed a system of government that like looks at human flaw and like looks at what what are the people after me going to probably fuck up, and how can yeah. we build a system <laughs> that's going to have like. Uh, resistance and resilience within human nature. Boy, if they only knew. Like this, I, but it's, it's still like it's really it's 250 years ish, yeah. right? Like yeah. still doing well with adjustment and yeah. it's uh, impressive. I, 100%. Right. I should have put that yeah. as number one. But I That's my number one. All right, Bailey, what's your number one? You know, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with uh, with this past election, electing oh. our first female vice president. Very cool. Very cool, and not just a female, but a female of color. Yeah, South Asian and, yeah. and black. Right. Yeah. Um, my mom, uh, when she was alive, uh, she didn't get to vote uh, for Barack Obama's second term, but she got to vote for the first one, and she had a really hard time deciding whether or not to vote for a person of color or to vote for the very first woman. I think she really liked Barack Obama, and she loved the fact that mm-hmm. there might be a person of color that win the presidency, be a huge. but she was so torn because she wanted a female president. So in, I remember. That, in that primary, it was so difficult for her to decide, and, you know, um, I think she was a little bit disappointed. Yeah. But 
Do you think Kamala will be our first woman president? I got a feeling she will. I mean, so? uh, Biden's left the door open, right, to run in four years. He said he's planning on it, right? Yeah, I mean, in. nobody nobody gets into the presidency in their first term and says, "I don't, I don't, I don't plan want on to, I don't want to run." I'm going to be a one-term president. Um, he's seventy-eight. Are there any women on the right that could run? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Course. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think Noam out of uh, South Dakota, North yes. Dakota, South Dakota. Yeah, I mean, she's like the forerunner right now. Uh, I know that Nikki Haley's been Nikki Haley's yeah. been playing with the idea. Dude, I was a big fan of Tulsi Gabbard. Remember the Democratic primaries? I really like Tulsi Gabbard. Don't get me started. All right. <laughs> we'll keep going. Yeah, I don't even want All right, what's your number one, guy? <laughs> God damn it. My number one is, uh, okay, so... In the same way that we elected a first non-old white man president. It took us yes. a while, but we got there. Yeah. I think we were also the last country to end slavery. Uh, Brazil. Brazil ended it after us. Well, there was there was other countries like in in Arabia that ended slavery in the 20th century, but okay, uh, we're the first major Western power, the last sorry, the last major Western power at least uh, to end slavery. Yeah, <laughs> with those parameters. In yes. Place. Yeah. God, I mean that that's. Uh, it's an embarrassment. It's also a legacy of the past. It's not just America. Um, so it's not like it's just an American thing. But um, that was a huge transition in, in human, like, political, as far as humans having a say in their own life thing. So that's what that's yeah. my point. Not being treated as Gotta grow and learn yes. from those mistakes, boys. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, that was our crazy eights for this it? week. That All was right. Fun, man. Yeah. Cool. Are we going to throw down... On a uh, soups to nuts question. I think we got to ask a nuts question. Yeah, I think we got to do that. All right, question. and it's all random here in the world. So we got to keep it quick, too, because we're on a timer. Oh, my God. The people want to know. We're running low. Right. So I'm going to ask you all first. Okay. Bailey, do you think God wants more for you? Um, if I believed in God, uh, <laughs> I, I would say I would say yes. Um, I think you know I think in the, in the scripture and everything that uh, that God wants the best for everybody. Uh, if I was just going based on that, is that where Charles? Yeah, I, I gotta agree with that. I mean, the the God in my imagination <laughs> is a benevolent one that wants everybody to be happy and secure and feel good. Uh, right. It's not one that would ask for self-flagellation or anything like that. So not ever. Not ever. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me start with Kyle. Kyle, All right. would you rather live in the ascendancy of a civilization or its decline? I would rather live in its decline. That's an interesting answer. Yes, because there's that saying. Hard times make hard men, hard men make easy times, easy times make soft men, soft men make hard times. And I would rather be wearing uh, socks down the stairs than clogs up them. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bailey. Um, I also I'll also agree with Kyle. I'd rather be Bailey. in the decline of okay. civilization. That's generally speaking, you know, the... Uh, where the most, um, how would you put it? I don't want to say hedonism, but the <laughs> the Nero, the Nero, right? Like Nero. you think of you think of like the end of, of the Roman civilization. Yeah, there was a lot of a lot of crazy things that happened, but Lula. but you also don't want to be you, you want to have everything already established, right? So I guess it really just comes down to you know what uh, what the definition of ascendancy and yeah, the peak was not and where where you are where you <laughs> land on that peak, right? Because yeah. I mean it's all work going up. Up, right, it's good hard work, but decline. If you're at the just at the tip of the decline, you might just be partying it up all the way. Down. But if you're at the Mad Max level of the decline, <laughs> right. that, that might be, be a different. Fun. That yeah. might be fun too. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Good answer, guys. Um, so, Kyle, if money wasn't a problem, which crappy minimum wage job would you be happy doing for the rest of your life? Oh, oh man. Yeah, there's a lot of them. You know, probably like waitering, because then you're still interacting with people, and you get to kind of be goofy in yourself and be really good at it. You get to have some pride in that still. Um, so yeah, waitering. Waitering is my answer. One of the most fun jobs <laughs> I ever had was working in a restaurant in <laughs> high school. Uh, I was a bus boy. We did a little bit of waitering, dishwasher stuff, but had the most fun. We would sing. We would tell jokes in the back. We were messing with the cooks all the time. The girls that worked the <laughs> counter 
were pretty and we would flirt with them. So, I mean, if I could go back to that, I would do that. That would be it? Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. All right. Last question. What's the question? What about you, Danny? Oh man, um, <laughs> you know I think I think like a like a minimum wage job. Um, I think I could be I think I could see myself being like a park ranger or something, or like one of those. Types That's not things. necessarily minimum wage. Yeah, but I get where you're going. Like it's like one of those like entry level like yeah. generally speaking, like the park make, ranger's assistant. Yeah, like, like, you know, <laughs> like the guy that collects the trash, right? Yeah, feeds well, like, the bears. You know, like one of those things where like they put you up in a bunkhouse or something. You get to yeah. hang out in nature. Oh, like yeah, a yeah. fire. Spot, or like if you were up in one of those towers that look for the fires. I know they're just that. hanging out there for hanging out there for 12 hours until like a little jack all day wagon, right? Yeah, well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kyle McCurdy. I'm not, and we're out of here. That Thanks for watching tonight. Like oh, yeah, Thank you, buddy. We'll see you all soon. Episode 20 is next. Thank you, Rogue. Dead whiskey ale, dead guy whiskey, dead guy whiskey. We gotta walk out still. Whoa, look at that. Good show. Hell yeah. I didn't do too bad.